What's up everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six, I'm Rob. Doing my part two to the collection video I did earlier on this year. So this is it. Starting over here with the Deanston 10 year old PX. This is a cast strength whiskey, 57.5%. It's finished in PX. This came out for I think $80 Canadian at the LCBO. It was an absolute steal. It sold out so quickly. People were astonished at how good this actually was. It's now going upwards of $250, $300, depending on where you buy it on the secondary market. Really, really great stuff. If you can still get it for close to retail, I highly recommend you grab that. Got the Dean Stin 2008 Bordeaux cask. So it was released after this 10-year-old, of course. They changed to these tins for pretty much the whole lineup now. Um, this one's also cast strength, 58.7%. It's really, really good stuff. Like I said, it's a Bordeaux cask, uh, cast strength stuff. Gooey, just great whiskey, really sweet. This one over here was a gift from my brother, Luke. He had this for quite a while. He bought it when it was regular price at the LCBO. I think it was around $170, maybe a little bit less. Uh, it's 46%. It's the Glen Morangie Milchen. I've heard some really, really great things about this whiskey. I've heard some really, really bad things about this whiskey. I think the consensus is it's really sweet. So if you like really sweet, you're gonna love this whiskey. If you don't like really sweet, you're not gonna love this whiskey. I plan on cracking this one maybe around Christmas time with the brothers. Recently, a few of us have become Springbank Society members. This is a Long Grow 11 it's cast strength, 56.9%. It's a refill, recharge, sherry butt cask, all right? Uh, they come in these cardboard boxes that are not very fancy, which is, I think, pretty cool because we don't have to worry about paying extra for the packaging. This one's 56.9%. I was lucky enough to get a backup of the Long Grow. They recently released a Springbank 15-year-old, also cast strength, aged in port, that I wasn't able to get a backup of, but... Uh, that one will be in a review shortly. So will this. Okay, moving on to some Canadian stuff. I have some Lot 40 cast strength. I have one of the 11 year olds that was released last year at 58.4%. Uh, and then I have two of these 12 year olds, 55% on the dot. A lot of people swear that the 12 year old is better than the 11 year old. I actually did a head to head. So if you're interested in watching that, it's in the archives. Both really great stuff. I can't wait till the new one comes out this year. This is the first release of the Canadian Club 40-year-old. The 41-year-old goes for 300 Canadian at the LCBO, which I think is a great price considering it's 41 years old. This 40-year-old is 100% corn whiskey. The newer one is a blend and they use the 0 0.09 factor for uh, stuff that they add to the whiskey, but I think it's really nice and it's worth a shot. Definitely try it before you buy it, but the 41 is really nice as well. This one is more of a keepsake because it's the first time something has drastically changed in Canadian whiskey in a long time when this was released along with the Northern Border Collection. So I'm happy to have this one in my collection. So if you've been watching this channel for some time, you know that there's two distilleries that I gravitate towards the most and that's Highland Park and Springbank. Obviously, uh, the bulk of my collection comes from Highland Park and Springbank because the way I look at it, if I'm going to collect something, it has to be something that I'm going to open in the future. If I have no interest in opening that whiskey, I do not intend to keep that whiskey. So over here, I have an old version of the 12-year-old, 43%. It's the older bottle. It doesn't have all the fancy glasswork. Just as good, if not better, than the new ones, in my opinion. They say that they're virtually the same, but some people notice a little bit of a difference. I decided to get this one just because it's the older bottle and you'll never know if there is a difference unless you have that one on hand. I got a couple of these 21 year olds. Um, they're beautiful whiskeys. They're 47.5%. They were only released in Canada and Europe, I believe, but they could be in Asia as well. The United States, for whatever reason, did not get those. They sorely missed out in my opinion because that's one of the best expressions from Highland Park that there is to date in my opinion. Um, 
it's a great price. If you can get it in Alberta, there's still a bunch kicking around. You can get it for under $300. Well worth it. I have this 17 year old, the dark 52.9%. This one came out in tandem with the light. It's actually still not at the LCBO, believe it or not, despite being released probably about two years ago now. It's excellent stuff. I really like the dark. I like the light a lot as well, but the dark just really does it for me. So that's why I have a backup bottle of that. Got the Highland Park 25 year old. I've never got a chance to try the 48.1% 25 year old, but I hear incredible things. This one is great as well. 45.7%. I wish it was a little higher in ABV, but we always wish that fantastic stuff. At the time I was getting these for like 400 Canadian, which is a steal. This beautiful bottle here, the Highland Park 30 year old is 45.7%. You will be seeing a review coming out on this one very shortly. We were lucky enough to get these in the UK for very, very reasonable prices of about 870 Canadian, I think it was. Um, at the LCBO, it goes for $2,000. In other parts of North America, you're looking at at least $1,200 to $1,500 American. Uh, so very, very good price at the store we bought in the UK. And uh, I highly recommend it. It's excellent whiskey. Over here, I have two one-offs from Highland Park. So I got the full volume, which I've talked to about in um, many videos over the years. But really, really good stuff. About 17 years old. Actually, it's about 18 years old. It's definitely 17 years old at least. So good stuff. Bottled at, I think, 47.2%, which is a nice ABV for that one. It's exclusively aged in bourbon casks. A very, very different look than what we're used to for Highland Park, so have a look at it because it's excellent stuff. One of the whiskeys I had an opportunity to have some say in was the Highland Park Trillium selected for the LCBO. This is a 12 year old single cask, cask strength, 61.4%. I love this whiskey. Jeremy from Sipper Social Club reviewed this whiskey on his channel. I didn't feel it was right that I reviewed it on my channel just because I was directly involved in choosing the cask, so I didn't, but Watch his review of it. I think it's fantastic stuff. I think he believes that too. It's about $250 Canadian, so not cheap. LCBO doesn't really have cheap prices for many things, but that's one of the things that if you want a really good whiskey and you don't mind spending the money, definitely invest in that. Moving on to a whiskey that I still think is going to blow up in price in the next little while. So if you can find this for retail, which I highly doubt by this point, I absolutely recommend you go out and get it because it's phenomenal stuff. It's the Jack Daniels Single Barrel Special Release Heritage Barrel, 50%. It's just incredible whiskey. Honestly, it's one of the best American whiskeys I've ever had in my life by far. I honestly think if you have a few bottles of this, drink them if you can, but the price on this is just gonna skyrocket and it's incredible stuff. Compared to what's out there, there's no reason why that shouldn't skyrocket. It's actually a rare whiskey that comes from the United States, whereas some of these whiskeys that are considered rare have releases of 45,000 bottles a year. So not quite that rare. That's definitely rare. They're not making any more of it. All right, so a couple of one-offs here. I got the Ben Riek 22-year-old Moscatel. I reviewed this way back in the day. Got a full bottle of this bad boy. It's fantastic stuff. I'm going to pop this eventually on a celebratory night. Really, really great whiskey. Honestly, uh, the 21-year-old the goes for $400 at the LCBO. This one, if you value it next to that 21-year-old, should be probably worth five, dollars $600 compared to that. So I'm not exactly sure what the secondary value on this whiskey is, but it's fantastic stuff. I got the Bal Blair 91 and Bal Blair... 1990. Now the 91 is bottled in 2018. The 1990 is bottled in 2017. If I had to choose between the two, I'd choose the 90 because it's a little heavier on the sherry side, whereas the 91 is a little heavier on the bourbon side. But both of them use a combination of bourbon and sherry casks, both wicked whiskeys. I highly recommend them. One of the series that I really want to collect, um, get at least two of each time is the 
classic cut series. Now, I have the 2017 here and the 2018. The 2017 was 58.4%, the 2018 was 51.2%. It's incredibly difficult to get cast strength or high ABV McAllen. The Classic Cut series and the Edition series, which I have the two and three here, which are my favorites aside from the one, um, are the only real opportunity to get high ABV McAllen. You're not going to get it from any of the age statements unless it's one of those exceptional share casks that are near impossible to get. Uh, these whiskeys are great. I do intend to collect the Classic Cut series, like I said, because I believe in 10, 20 years, just like the cast strength, when it was completely sold out and discontinued, went up in astronomical prices. I think for $150 Canadian, $100 American, um, you're going to get great whiskeys to try and then also collect, and they're very affordable. A couple more one-offs here is the Klein Leash. 1997 double matured sherry and ex bourbon it is the distillers edition okay this one was bottled in 2011 so it's about 14 years old it doesn't say the months on it so we can assume that it's at least 13 years old i like this one a lot better than the 14 year old regular release that klein leach does some people don't that's okay this is really good whiskey in my opinion i got a review coming out on this very shortly. A bottle that I've already reviewed early on in my channel, which I decided to stock up on back in the day when it first came out, was the Glenfiddich uh, Malt Masters Edition. It is really nice whiskey. I really, really like it. Everybody I've served this to thought it was phenomenal. I have one bottle left. I'm going to stash this one for a little while, revisit it in the future. Last but not least, going back to my Springbank collection, I talked about my Long Grows and my Springbank 12 in length the last time. I have a couple more to show you guys. So I got a Long Grow 17 year old single cask. It's 54.6%. This one is phenomenal. It's aged 10 years in a Chardonnay cask after being aged seven years in a bourbon cask. Only 360 bottles. It's one of the greatest Long Grows that I've tasted, it's so, so good. If you're lucky enough to live in Alberta or be able to buy from Alberta, there are still a few kicking around of that single cask. I highly recommend it. You guys honestly uh, can get a great whiskey for under $200, I believe, in most places, and it will not be that price for long because all the single cask long grows that I've seen on the secondary market climb way beyond $400, um, and it doesn't take very long at all. Next up, I got the Hazelburn 14. This is honestly one of the best whiskeys I've had this year. It's one of those whiskeys that I didn't rank incredibly high. I think I gave it an 89 or a 90 on my score, which is not really fair because I kept going back to it and I kept loving this whiskey every time I went back to it. Uh, so I definitely have a backup bottle. I'm going to look for a few more if I can. Really, really good stuff. It is... 49.3% Sherry Bomb in my opinion. There is some gunpowder and smoke notes to it despite the fact that Hazelburn doesn't smoke their whiskey. It's it's fantastic stuff. You'll really like it. Going back to some of the best whiskeys that I've had this year is the 2019 21 year old Springbank. Honestly, I can't say enough good things about this whiskey. If you watched my top 10 whiskeys to try before you die, this was on that list. Watch that video to find out where it ranked. It was also on Sipper Social Club's list, and we had the exact same position for this whiskey. Phenomenal whiskey. If you honestly have an opportunity and don't want to spend the money on the 25-year-old, that's the whiskey to get. But I also bought a backup of the 25-year-old because it's phenomenal stuff. They used rum casks in both of these. They added port casks to this one, and they added some sherry casks to the 25. So um, both of these in 2019 were excellent. I don't know, maybe Springbank just really went nuts in 2019, really decided to put heavy quality whiskeys out because everything I tried from Springbank this year was phenomenal. The only ones that I can't really speak to are the Springbank 12, but I tried the 10, the 15, and these guys, and I didn't even love the 15 back in the day, but I tried it recently and I really liked it. So who knows, maybe I can go back to the 18 this year and I'll enjoy that as well. 
that's my video for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you really like it and you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell so you get the notifications for when I release a video. You guys can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and you guys can also support this channel on Patreon. Cheers.